Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. day off my name is Corey, and i am the the, the the host of this here podcast and today i am joined by one of my dear friends uh miss katie may uh who's also happens to be our event uh organizer coordinator what title director like? director whatever event director event she's the event queen in this thing <laughs> what's up buddy uh, i'm excited i'm happy to be here thanks yeah <laughs> Thanks. You sound like you want to end it already. I know. We just got started. See ya. <laughs> oh my god. Where's Tony when you need? I've him? been talking to you all day, so this is like you know, <laughs> it is kind of weird when we do these podcasts in the middle of our days. Yeah, we've been in meetings all day, and then we kind of have to like. There's that gear that we kind of have to switch into. Like, okay, now we're in like podcast mode. Totally. You know. It's cool. So um, today, uh, I'm really excited about our guest today. We have Mr. Ryan Whedon. And um, as we are recording this, it's about a week after his hero event in San Diego, which A, I want to hear all about. And B, I'm just such a big fan of Ryan. And I think I tell him this every time that I see him, but like, it's amazing. I, f- I kind of feel like we're on parallel paths a little bit. Like we've created this thing out of nothing. Like it, we, we've created like our podcast kind of out of thin air. And uh, for those of you that don't know, like, uh, I don't know what his title is, but president CEO of mob or, you know, masters of balayage, which again, kind of like, it just kind of came into the industry. And it, it's so very cool to watch someone build something from kind of the ground up. And, and I'm just such a big fan of, of, of that, um, certainly in our industry and how we're kind of doing it outside of what the normal brand support is, mm-hmm. you know, that would kind of build in this thing just on our own and, and, and through our own thing. Anyway, not to put myself in there, whatever, it doesn't matter. But anyways, I'm excited about the conversation today. I'm excited about events. I'm like, I've been talking about for two years that like, I'm so excited that events are back and events are positive for the industry. Cause I think, I think that's it. Like all these events are positive, um, for the industry. So that's it, man. Yeah. And uh, how events have evolved too, from not just the big shows and everybody going to that. And that's where you're getting your like yearly, whatever, like mm-hmm. there's just all these things popping up that are just so impactful in so many different ways and really cool people putting them on. I think that the smaller shows, meaning like not the convention center shows, I think I think they're really needed because I think that they are attendee focused mm-hmm. um, and 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 brings a lot of attention to the attendees. And, and and by being able to do that, it brings the the wants and the needs to the attendees. Yeah. As opposed to just like, hey, we have a big room filled with hairdressers. Go walk through there and find what you can find. You know, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit more intimate. Um, I'm not more really of an sh- experience. More of an experience. Exa- well, I'm sure we'll get into that today. So <laughs> yeah. uh, should we get in? Yeah, for sure. Mr. Ryan Whedon, welcome back to your day off man thank you you talk about how this is the middle of your day and this is the first thing i've done today aside from get coffee so dry, <laughs> got the kids dress which is a chore in and of, of itself and, and then it's just the first stop is coffee i'm like okay podcast time let's get ramped up and uh, i'm excited to be here so i hope your day is going well i hope it looks good later yeah yeah no no we, <laughs> it's just you know, like for, for actually it's October 1st, but you know, for other people that, that don't know, or here, here's a little event uh, insight is that, you know, for the last month, Katie and I have been on like, like 10 calls a day, just trying to see, you know, we're trying to become a line item on, on, on different brands, like uh, uh, stuff and, and all that happens in September. So, you know, if, mm-hmm. if you see that your influencer, or you see that your brand's not available in September, it's because they're talking to everybody in the the world. <laughs> Of sure. money for, for for next year but uh congratulations on on the hero event first of all i love the name of the hero event um where did, where did that kind of come from uh, the thank you for that um the name came from i guess one i feel like in order to get uh, become successful in our lives and our business we all need a mentor we all need a coach we all need some kind of somebody that steps in and becomes a hero whether it's a a, a parent or whether it's a a peer, somebody that is going to help us to get to that uh, that next level that we can't really get to on our own. Most people, even if they're self-made, have had help. Anybody that says they did it on their own is lying their ass off, you know? Um, so I think that that's one thing is to really highlight people that are looked up to, that are uh, mentors, icons, influencers, thought leaders, et cetera. But then it's also 
my idea came from an event I went to in 2019, which was called Influencer. It was with Brendan Burchard. It was this incredible event, incredible experience, as you had said, and that's what we're trying to uh, create. But um, Tony Robbins has also been a big mentor of mine. Uh, You know, of course, he doesn't know that. I don't know him personally. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That'd be pretty cool. Probably very scary to look up at and be like, oh my gosh, (laughs) it's Tony Robbins. Uh, uh, But that's what I wanted to bring to the industry. That personal growth meets hairdressers Be- because um I-, I feel like a lot of us in, in our as uh, as stylists in, in the business have at one time or still believe that they are just hairstyles or have been called you're just a hairstylist when are you going to get a real job you're never going to amount to anything so we are have been okay just living in this like mediocrity and with mediocre goals and and most people in life only live mediocre lives it, it, and this is about kind of tapping into our own inner hero to learn what it takes to live an extraordinary life so we put in these personal growth elements along with skills so that they get the the, the total success package and the way it's designed it's it's really just to keep them in their seats blow them away give them ideas and give them knowledge give them inspiration that they never even knew they needed mm. i love that too because hero is such a like um like a, a self word, like it means something different mm-hmm. to everyone. So it like encapsulates so many, but, but, you know, for each individual it means something different. I, I just think that's so cool. I, I love also yeah. how the motivation is to wake up your inner hero, mm-hmm. right? Like, like it's not about the hero isn't who's standing in front of you. The mirror, the, the heroes who you, you work in front of every day and that's your own reflection in the mirror. Like that's, 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 yeah. That's so, that's dope. And it's about tapping into our potential. And it's even, uh, our hero could be us five years from now. So look kind of like learning what it's going to take to, like if I was going to motivate myself five years ago or 10 years ago, knowing what I know now, I could definitely do that. And it's about almost like reframing our belief systems that have just been pushed on us for years and years, depending on where we grew up, who we listened to. Uh, it's all the same. You know, most people aren't going to be successful. You got to be okay with just working every day for the rest of your life. Uh, meet little pay increases here and there, but, but it's to show hairdressers what's possible and to show them that inspire them to the possibility that anything that they want, any big dreams that they want is possible using hair as a vehicle to get there. Mm, I love that. What, yeah. um, how many, um, how many attendees, uh, uh attend hero? Well, it's been it's funny. We this is our fifth one. Uh, the first year we had, I think, a little over maybe two hundred, which was still great for a first event. Um, this year, after a kind of a rocky start to the year, we're just like, I don't know if we should even do Hero this year. It was a weird, weird year for events, for classes, for ticket sales. Nobody was buying anything at first, and and, and then I don't know what happened. The year the summer got supercharged, and we ended up with over eight hundred. <clears throat> Holy shit. <laughs> I know. Oh I my know. God. That's at the beginning awesome. of the year. I was, I, we were I was like, not expecting that number yeah. <laughs> at, the, at the beginning of the year. We were, we were, we were like, should we cancel it? We, we, are we lucky if we get 200 people there just because at the beginning of the year, you know, the cost of life was expensive as hell. Nobody was spending money. Everybody was hanging on to, to everything. Uh, and it was just, we're just like, I don't know if this is a good idea. <laughs> That's amazing. What did you, hold on now. Okay. We're getting, we're going to get in the details here and I hope nobody gets bored about this. <laughs> did, you, did you guys, did, did you, did you change your marketing? Did you, did, did you get really aggressive in marketing? Like, like what happened? And don't just tell me they just showed up. I don't buy that. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we didn't really do much that was significantly different from the years before. I did run some Facebook ads um, to, to I guess, just to put a little bit more visibility out there, but I didn't change the ads. I mean, I, as as I know, in our, in our company, we have so many facets going at all times that I'm stressed out beyond belief most days. <laughs> um, so I, I none of us could put fully into like let's market for hero we had ideas and this and we would do videos here and there but i mean we've got a color line coming out in a couple months we've got uh, existing products that are out we've got classes we've got our online education and our team is we only have like five full-time people and we have a very small team i would love to have more but it just comes down to a cost thing right now um and and we just didn't have the manpower to do it so we didn't really do much for it i mean we did, i did some podcasts i did some live IGs with our guest speakers. But when it comes to events, a lot of times we think like, well, if we get speakers to post about it and do this, you know, then we'll generate some more business. 
but we can't rely on that because they don't do it uh, unless they're paid to do a certain amount of posts. And it's not, and it's not their fault. It's just, we do what's in our own best interest and they have their own things going on. So yeah. even if you offer these different incentives, you know, it's like they have to want to post about it if it's going to sound genuine. Uh, so, so that kind of, those types of models have failed in the past. So I wouldn't recommend like relying on your event for other people to promote it. It's like you have to promote your own event. But we just talked about it and started promoting it in the last three months. I think we really hit it hard with all that. Our balayage awards that we do sometimes bring extra visibility to it. But again, it's not the end all be all. I mean, only, you know, 40, 30 people maybe for the awards showed up. It's not definitely not the draw. Kind of like a BTC is different because I think their awards really draw people there for the event. I think that's, sure. um, but also a very different event. And, I, I don't I wish I had an answer for you. that was a very long answer to say they just <laughs> they say, yeah, I don't have an answer you know, I was trying to figure it out on my own and it didn't <laughs> yeah. happen we talked we were mentioning the pivot point research paper wow. that just came out if any of y'all are listening and have not read this and you're on their email list you got it and read it um but this is one of the things they talk about is that attendees for events people who are paying for in person like the expectation is through the roof right now and mm -hmm. people are not buying things until last minute when it's in person they're waiting until the last minute to strike you know and it's it's really interesting it's a trend that's happening right now so it's funny that you mentioned mention that and yeah. then like you know this is like the research Wait, did the we had about 400 Wait. tickets sold in the last two months <laughs> people well, were buying yeah. people were buying tickets the day of wow. that's crazy yeah, yeah. and that that's crazy uh, yeah oh, I had so many questions Rahul. so Hold many up. questions <laughs> <laughs> did the white pa paper mention why or or do, were they just saying they were waiting so I, I, it just said that this was a, like a, a trend that's happening right now that's crazy. I mean, we definitely, I mean, even with our show that we do every year, Pressy Poe and Friends um, in April, um, we uh, we get the same thing. You know, we get, we get like, we get consistent buys and then about mm -hmm. the last three weeks, then it's like, oh shit, I'm going to miss out on this. What I'll say is people uh -huh. know what it is will purchase early. Right. And newcomers or people seeing it for the first time are not really sure. They're the ones that kind of hesitate and wait. Mm -hmm. That's kind of okay, the trend. Same, shameless plug. If you go to Pressy Poe and Friends. <laughs> dot <laughs> no, no, for real. Sign up for our emails because um our because we do an email only sale every Black Friday. Yeah. And that's 1000% the cheapest the tickets will be not by 1000%, but, but <laughs> definitely the cheapest the tickets will be all year. So, you know, if, if there's any intrigue at all, that's definitely the day to, to, to buy your ticket. Shameless plug over. Right. She, she's, she's awesome. I actually saw her a uh, few days before hero at, at the hair love retreat, which I had the pleasure of speaking at. Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Didn't you got you and you and Elizabeth kind of did a little exchange change. Yeah, there. we did. We're like, Hey, you do my event. I'll do your event. Cool. Even though they're within a week of each other, you know, I was doing yeah. her event on Wednesday and then I was, uh, flew out Wednesday night, and a day later, I was rehearsing for Hero. <laughs> that's amazing. Well, I mean, another shameless plug. Like, how, how uh, amazing is Zion, dude? Oh, that's a beautiful place. That was my first time there. I've, I've been to places like that in, like, Utah and Colorado, um, and, but they all are very unique. And, and then just get there, and you just listen. And all you hear is nature. You don't hear anything else. It's just quiet, peaceful, and you just, like, you feel zenful. Yeah, for sure. Next year, we definitely um, we're gonna make it a point to get there, and then you know maybe a, maybe two days later we fly down to San Diego for Hero. So oh, Hero's Hero's gonna be in Nashville next year. Oh, oh let's say wasn't it in Nashville a couple years ago? It was, and we loved it so much. And San Diego is expensive as shit, so we're not we're not gonna do it here. <laughs> it's like we actually want to make money off the event, and so if you want to make money off an event, don't do it in San Diego. Right. Sure. <laughs> yeah, but it was good. fun and it was cool and it was convenient <laughs> that's cool well well katie and i will definitely uh, try to be in attendance for uh for uh -huh. next year uh, uh, do you have well, the absolutely yeah we'll talk about it and if you guys even wanted to set up a little podcast area or something i think that oh, we're would be in 100 cool. yeah we fun 100 percent. yeah when yeah. is it next year do you have that we're we're nailing down the hotel now but it'll probably be the second or third weekend of uh september oh perfect all right well, yeah We'll, we'll be there. We're, we'll come. Fantastic. Back. We we Fantastic. can even drive down if we need. To. I know it's not, it's like yeah. what, eight hours. About that. Yeah. yeah. About eight hours. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll awesome. Get the gear in there. And we'll I hate us. flying. Oh my god. <laughs> so do you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Make it a nice fun road trip. There yeah, we go. Exactly. Eight hours is my max, though. That's like my. Uh, you know, but yeah, I hate if I don't have to fly, then I don't. 
That's one crazy. of my one of my goals. I'm gonna say it right now. It's probably stupid to say this right now, but well, people will forget whatever. But being natural, I'm gonna I'm gonna play some music on the stage. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a do a number. Because why the hell not, right? One of my goals yeah. in life. One of my That's goals awesome. in life is to play on stage. And why not play in Nashville, even though it's you know, um why not? It's 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 on my dream board every year. I have a I have a vision vision board here. It's from years ago, but like I want that to be me with the guitar on the, yes, on the thing, you know. It. And uh I'm just like, why not? You know, I've one reason to build our own stage, build my own stage with Masters of Bali, of course, to educate and and kind of fill that that purpose of wanting to entertain people so even if it's just for a minute and a half or something even if it's terrible just screw it let's do it no it'll be so much fun though you know yeah i know i know it'll be it'll be a blast and you know it's something else that elizabeth does at, at hair love is that she does um she does karaoke night which by the way that looks fun when we did it a couple years ago it was the highlight of the week it's just so cool to watch everybody get mega vulnerable but also like buy-in like the buy-in mm. is like sick you know people like do it i think i saw Derek in a tutu i'm not gonna lie <laughs> i think her husband ended up in a tutu this year uh, that's and, awesome he's a cool guy Derek's a really cool guy, and, yeah. and I assume you met uh, Papa Jeff too. Yeah, one of yeah. my favorite people. He's on he's famous there, huh? <laughs> famous and infamous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, both things. Yeah, you definitely. Yeah. If you get Jeff's ear, you'll get lost in the woods somewhere or, or <laughs> desert somewhere with him because he's just he, he's just <laughs> we just love that guy so much. So um, I, I kind of want to get you know some more more into events. What what kind of motivated motivated the event? Like, what did you see out there where you're like, oh, we can fill this. I, 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 I don't know. Um, well, it was that one event that inspired me to do it was that influencer event that I was actually in San Diego. Um, so it was cool to kind of have an, my own event here as well. Um, and I saw that and, and it was, I, I never left my seat. Like I was so in tune to every single speaker. There were all these incredible personal growth speakers at this Brandon Burchard event that I went to. And I, and I stole the model from that for the show because <laughs> most shows that we go to, are well they're they're you had mentioned it before they're not really attendee focused they're more brand focused you know they're supported by the brands and hopefully people show up you know but it also say like you know uh so and so goes on from one to three um you know you know redkins from this time matrix is from this time trust is from this time and they have all these segments where stylists can pick and choose where they want to go but then you're going to get different attendance and, and then they're going to miss probably important things that they maybe like, oh, I don't use trust, so I'm not going to go, or oh, I, I, you know, I don't use Redkin, so I'm not going to go to that. Where we know that every single person is going to get value in some way or relate to some of these speakers, even if they've never heard of them before. So we don't want to discount that. We want them to be there for the experience, and if we can keep them glued to their chair, that's that's they're going to learn things that they didn't even know was possible, and they're going to leave with light bulb moments, ahas, and inspiration for days so we never ever give them uh, a list of when people are going on they just got to sit in their chair mm. and see who's next and they're and nobody ever leaves you know they're stuck they're exhausted by the end of every day but they're just like i can't even i came here and i didn't know what to expect and it's life-changing stuff i was watching this person i'd never heard of him before and i was like and he was relating to me and then people are trying to find the speakers after and talk to them and and, and just the relatability of it is fantastic um so so that's what the idea of this was to bring a side of the hair industry the i would say the most important side of what makes a hairstylist successful it's the business it's the branding it's the planning it's the messaging um it's the vision you can't just be great at hair and expect everything to fall into place i mean yes skills are important but it's 10 percent of the puzzle that's why um you can you can be great but but still be like why don't i have clients why don't i make as much money as other people um because if you could be the best hair cutter in the world or or hair colorist in the world but if nobody knows about you if you don't know how to reach your dream clients you're never going to you're never going to live up to your full potential but if we give them the other 90% and of course we also have the skills training on top of that with other courses and uh, events that we do then they're going to be unstoppable that's amazing. Are you, um, I know that we, a couple of years ago, Tony and I did the uh, Brit Siva thing and she brought a lot of um, like outside, like influence or outside speakers is uh, at mob. Are you bringing in like, uh, and by outside, I mean, outside of the industry, sure, outside of the industry, yeah, outside of the industry. Are, are the, those people from showing? time to time? We did that 
in our first couple of heroes, but it, I don't think it really hit home as much. I think people still want to see influencers and uh, people up that are that are doing kind of like things outside of the box, but inside the hair industry because it's just, it's more relatable to to what they're doing. Um, the other speakers as fantastic as they were, I would get a lot out of them as an entrepreneur, but it just didn't hit it like it would for a, a hairstylist. That, that that that's good and also those outside influencers cost a lot of money so if they're not hitting yeah value's not there then you know yeah. probably a, as an event coordinator is probably you know the, the, it's less mm-hmm. value now i want to speak about an up-and-coming um um influencer since we're on the, the, the okay what's the, the thing and someone that's we're connected with we're both connected with and um and i just she was our winner for presley for shadow presley post so um she won the award and then she came in and she shadowed presley for the weekend and now like now she's in our hair all the time we can't even get her out of our hair if we want yeah. to not that we want to but um but i want to talk about mj and just what she means and who she is and, and all that stuff because i am such a big huge like big hearted fan of hers oh yeah she's fantastic from from day one with us she's always been the one that would do something uncomfortable. If we asked her to do something, she would, without a doubt, just be like, okay, sure. I remember one year at Premiere, Orlando, when we were there, uh, she was one of the team, and she had a role, but it wasn't like a, a lead role or anything at the, that time. But we wanted to like uh, attract people over because we are doing another session, education session, and we wanted to pull people in. And we're like, does anybody want to take the mic and start to reel people in? She's like, yeah, I'll do it. She jumps on the stage without a a second of hesitation and she just knew exactly what to say and with that accent it just, <laughs> just, it just pulls people in that thick southern accent you just oh, yeah. you just you just it was like who is that and well, let's go see what's going on and it's loud and it's exciting um yeah she's she's definitely a superpower with us ryan here's what's amazing with her is that um so for Presley Poe and friends, we do it at a, we do it at a, at a Paul Mitchell school or an academy, a hair school, right? And um, a couple years ago, when when she shadowed uh, Presley, they um, they uh, they kept Presley the day after, so the school actually kept her, so to educate the students there on, on Monday morning. And we literally we put MJ like we gave her the mic, and she just got it, and she had never spoken before. Ryan, three minutes into her never speaking before, mm-hmm. the entire room is crying. The entire room is, is she she hypnotized them with that southern charm. She that's what she is. She's a hypnotist. You know, yeah. southern charm just kind of brings brings you in, and like you just trust her, you believe her. She just, I, I just, I just adore her so much. And and luckily she shows up at Presley Poe and Friends every year, so it, it's like it's it's really cool and it, for us it's really exciting to see this girl that when she won Presley Poe and Friends like she was crying you know on the thing and now yeah. to kind of watch her like on your stage and, and watch right. like. She's really like getting, she's really standing in her own shoes, you know, and she's creating who she is and what she is. And it's just, it's amazing to kind of watch. And like, certainly from our end, it's really cool to be, um, to be on the journey with these people that are growing. It's just, it gets Mm -hmm. very emotional. Well, I think she's not afraid to fail. She's not Mm -hmm. afraid to mess up. She's not afraid, like, you know, she's just, she'd be, oh, she'll be apologetic or whatever, Mm -hmm. but it's a learn. Like that's how she looks at it, which I think is what is a, it's like a really powerful trait to have that. Right. And, and somebody like that will go very far as, as so long as they stay humble and still appreciate the opportunities. And if everybody had an attitude like that throughout their career, the doors would be open. People would want to work with them like they do with us. And it's, but it's, but there's a lot of entitlement right now. And there's a lot of people that just expect the world to be handed to them just because they have a cosmetology license or, or, or because they did one great thing and they hang on to that when it's like, okay, you did one great thing. Here's your recognition. Keep doing great things. Keep showing up. One time is not going to be enough because there's plenty of other people like MJ that will step in when you, when you say no. You know what? That's that's such a great point. You know, like th- there's always someone there to to, to fill your mm-hmm. sh- willingly to fill to fill you know any any hole that 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 either your ego or your attitude uh, will yeah. keep you out of. I mean, and, and you know, listen, I'm I, I'm speaking from that was me for a long time. Mm-hmm. For many yeah. years, that was me. Like, oh, I'm too cool. I thought you were going to say I'm speaking for Katie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, to step in, I'm definitely speaking for Katie. Uh-huh. As far as, like, leaving that opening and, like, wondering yeah. why, like, you know, the, wondering why, like, no one took me serious and because I had a piss poor attitude and, mm-hmm. and it was too cool for the room. Now, that all being said, it was definitely within my own insecurities. Right? It was I don't insecure. think I you then. No, I don't think so. No. Mm-mm. No, no, no. I no. wouldn't probably wouldn't be here then, right, if, if you no. – 
knew him then, right? I think we all had a period where we just were just jerks, or and it's making up for uh, a lack of self confidence, right? We we are that way because we think we need to posture ourselves to be cool so that people will take us seriously or as an adult or, or whatever it is we're trying to make up for. Um, but thankfully we've moved past that Yeah, I mean, <laughs> or, or life has humbled us enough to realize that like, okay, yeah, I was a shit. And now I'm going to um, work on showing up better. If you're an older, I use a gentleman cause that's, those are the only shoes I stand in. But if you're an yeah. old gentleman and like, you're a nice kind person, that only means that, that, that you've been through it. Right. Like you've had to like you've had to process through it and you've had to process like I've, I have a dark side that I'm now like I'm controlling, you know, um, and, and it no longer that dark side no longer serves me the way that it once served me. So now it's time to put that to rest a little bit, you know, but but, but that but it's been through tons and tons of head work and it's been done through tons and tons of, uh, of well, I mean, head work and, and just being humbled and like not understanding why life isn't working out until you kind of like put that when you can put that to bed at least you mm-hmm. know that's certainly been my experience or just keep yourself locked up on the full moon nights <laughs> <laughs> i saw the stupidest video yesterday of a guy turning into a werewolf like like but it was presented as like this is really happening yeah, and i'm like you see the blip in the, <laughs> in the I, uh, alien hand uh, come through the ground oh uh, god uh, <laughs> I'm both embarrassed and proud of the shit that I consume. Uh, <laughs> it's so. Funny. It's so. It's your it's your phone's way of telling you you need a break. Put the phone down, <laughs> right? Like I'm starting to see weird shit. I gotta put the phone down. Right. Well, it's because I click on weird shit. It's reason you've seen. <laughs> you gotta to, click once. You just gotta click once, that. and then that's all you're gonna see in your feed. Mm-hmm. I once had to turn my. I had to shut my TikTok down because you know whatever the first two days of my consumption was was now filled my thing, and I'm like, none of this is good. I, yeah. you, you gotta go. So you know, I had to reopen it and <laughs> all that crazy, crazy, wild stuff. Oh my gosh, that that's crazy. Um, I I, I don't know where we're going now. It's just kind of crazy. Well, you know, what we did talk about is, is a couple things. Um, and like, are you uh, how actively are you using AI? I'm using AI <laughs> all the time. And when I say all the time, I all the, every single day I use it um, probably for a, a half an hour, maybe at least, sometimes longer, but it's but it's it's for everything. It's for coming up with ideas, it's for writing th- I've written podcasts with AI and with little tweaks here and there. Um, even recently, of like I need an idea and write me a 12-minute podcast. And then you know, I'm I'm pretty good at like just reading it and sounding like myself and, and then interjecting my own stories to make it sound like me. But the more we actually use chat GPT, that's what I use, the more it knows us. It, it know it remembers every single conversation that we've ever asked it for, which is why it's probably good not to share your chat GPT with somebody else. because You're going to lose your voice, but you'll say, write me this or do, do this for me or give me some ideas on this, uh, summarize this video. And it sounds exactly like me. It sounds like I would do it, and it remembers things. I, I can now do short sentences, short prompts that it, it remembers. Like, oh, I, he's probably talking about his webinar. Let's, he'll, we'll go into that. It's just incredible. And for somebody that's not using it, they're probably like, "What the hell is he talking about right now?" Right. Prompts and chat G four T and you know whatever. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like I've heard of that AI stuff, but I'm a hairstylist. How am I going to use it? You the can use it. I think the first thing you could do is use it for conversations. Like one thing is that we don't really do well as hairstylists is take criticism well. If somebody texts us and say, "Hey, I don't, you know, my my haircut's a little uh, lopsided. Can you fix it?" Or in the first thing you want to do is defend yourself. Well, well, it wasn't like that when you left the salon. You know, yeah. you left happy. Why are you pissed off now? We got to just not respond to those types of things, especially after having a couple glasses of wine at night. <laughs> we want to. What I would do, what I have done several times, or even if you get a hater somebody um, bashing you in, in some way, like how can you respond in a professional way? You take what they say and you say, help me construct a, a, a nice um, response to this so it, so it comes across professional, but I still stand my ground. Boom, you'll get the most incredible response to it. Um, if it's an invitation to a birthday, so it's not just for business, it's for anything. Uh, I've, gosh, I, I should just open up my, my window and it's just everything I've asked for. I've even asked for like, Hey, I need a good pancake recipe. Okay. <laughs> and it's just like, hilarious. Boom. <laughs> and the great thing about Chad is they don't give you the story behind it. How like, this is your aunt's favorite, like pancake recipe. You just get the recipe. Right. You know, just give you- me the recipe. 
You know, going back to the, like, d- talking to a client through text, though, like, is that taught how to manage that? Because I no. know, like, when I was in school, obviously, we you did you did not talk to clients through text. Through, like, that's just not professional. Email, maybe, mm-hmm. right? But yeah, that's either on the phone or when they're in there in person. And, you know, especially with suites and all these things coming up and everyone having to be the business owner and be all the things and handle all of that. You know, I do. I text my clients now and I do. But I'm still, like, so there is a boundary they don't cross and they know not to cross it. And I just am extremely professional with my clients because that's my setup. That's what I want. That's how I present myself. Um, but I really feel like that needs to be taught like at the root level. And then, mm-hmm. you know, once you create who you are, you can, you know, kind of bend the rules a little bit, but it's like everything, right? Like once you learn how to do it and the professionalism you need to have and how to respond to people, you know, like that is it's just such a, such a but, missed point. I think. But, but I also think that if we're diving into like, you know, whatever is like there also comes a point to where like your ego isn't tied around somebody's unhappiness right i mean the, the, when you're young like your ego is so caught up in that like but that's why you have to stay professional i'm not saying no no I, to the point oh. to that, to that oh. point like yeah oh, you're you, arguing with me i was ready to go no no, no, no. <laughs> bring it but it's a hard learn <laughs> it's a hard learn because for many many years you only see life through the filter of your own ego and yeah like how sure this is, this is attacking you and at that point you're also like I'm not that good of a hairdresser. Like, you know, we've all had those conversations with ourselves, you know, I, you know, whatever, you know, I'm not that good of a hairdresser or, you know, make, making feel. So now this is like, this is reassurance that you're not that good of a hairdresser. Sure, you know, sure, like, sure. So, it, but you're it's right. It's a humbling right? moment. And I think we need those humbling moments because it's what makes us a better hairdresser. You know, yeah. it's, it's that, it's that, you know, you win and failure kind of, kind of thing. Well, and, one and of the things that recorded. saved, uh, I not saved my business, but helped me grow my business. Probably one of the single most important things that I did was sending follow-up texts after, uh, after appointments, not after every appointment, but new clients or any client that was existing that we did a big change. And I would follow up the next day within 24 hours. And I would say, you know, Hey, you know, hey, Marcy, thank you so much for coming in yesterday. Hey, I just want a quick uh, courtesy follow-up. How are you liking your hair? And, you know, question mark, boom. People will be honest with text, and they're, they're going to care that you followed up. I used to actually, initially in my career, I did phone calls, and I called this guy after I gave him a haircut, and I called him. I said, hey, this is Ryan. Uh, I cut your hairs today. He's like, what? Ryan? Oh, my, my hairstyles? The hairstyles? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, I just want to call and just make sure you, you how you're liking your cut. And he's like, Oh, dude, I, I love it. It's one of the best cuts I've ever had. I This is so weird. I've actually never had anybody reach out to me and ask, oh, dude, I really appreciate that. Thank you. And then he ended up sending friends and family oh. and this. And, and you know, th- that also leads to five-star reviews on, on all the platforms. But even, but then you took it to just make it easier, like a text, but not like an automated, like, hey, thank you for your service yesterday. If you get a chance to fill out this survey, nobody's going to do that shit. Yeah. So do you you just actually take time and i mean how many texts could it be five to ten a day you you text them and you just say the same thing you know courtesy follow-up how you like in your hair today you will learn a lot about your clients everybody gets back nobody there's never been somebody that's never gotten back you can't avoid a text like that most of them are just like oh i love it thank you so much for checking in see you next time uh but you know you'll get 20 percent that say hey um Thank you so much for following up. Actually, my color, I got home and I noticed it was a little bit uh, off. Is there, uh, you know, uh, and um, or my cuts a little bit longer on the side. And then you, that's your opportunity to to keep them to, uh, and even avoid a potential negative um, response or, or negative review. So that's your opportunity to say, oh, oh thank you so much for telling me. Um, let's schedule a time to get you in so that we can adjust it to your liking. And I say never fix. I say never say fix. Just say adjust it to your liking. That way you never take blame for something and so they can come after you later for any reason. Uh, but that way you start to really see the value of your services. Are you are you as good as you think you are? Because we always say, oh, they all left happy. Everybody leaves happy. They all love me. Well, I haven't seen Marcy in a while. Mm-hmm. And, oh, she must have died. Yeah, so <laughs> she must have died or moved. No, she just didn't like your stupid haircut. But you never know that because you never followed up with her. You know, so we have this like ego, this confidence, this false confidence yeah. that we think everybody loves everything we do. Everything we touch is gold. But then we actually, and it, and it hurts getting those texts because we think it's perfect. You know, everything's perfect. It's loud. But then when you do it on their own, they're going to notice flaws or their friend's going to tell them something. But the amount of customer loyalty that I created from that and the referrals that I got from that, just that simple act of following up with new clients, 
within 24 hours. You don't wait longer than that because they've already made a decision if they like you or their hair. Uh, and to avoid negative criticism on Yelp or Google, it's life changing. Yeah, that's so brilliant too. With like, keep, it'll help you keep the person because mm -hmm. most people just don't go back. Yeah, they didn't right. say anything in the chair. They're not going to tell you. They're just not going to see you again. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And see they don't, I mean, they're also like, they don't want to hurt your feelings either, right? Like they don't want to get in the way of you and your own ego. Right. If they're leaving and not saying anything, then yes, they don't want to hurt your feelings. Right. But text, text, there's there's more freedom in the text. Yeah. But so also that's why you've opened, it yeah. up. you've opened up the conversation and said, hey, I'm mm -hmm. okay with this. This is why I'm reaching out, you know, like like this is more important, you know, so now now it, it, it creates a space of more open, yeah. open conversation and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. You know? That's crazy. Um, hey, I want to get back to AI. Real Sorry, quick. that's okay. No, 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 no. You know the number one rule to doing the podcast is Ryan. Be Let the flexible. conversation. No, well, <laughs> number two rule is uh, is the conversation has to dictate the conversation. So wherever it goes, it goes. You know? <laughs> exactly. Good rule. That, that's 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 how we. So do I guess it. yeah, we got on that tangent with AI, uh, going from AI and AI uh, just to to say I would come up with responses if if a client would text me something or even like I would use that like how would I respond? What's a good way to a quick um, two sentence way to follow up with my clients, keep it casual, keep it professional, whatever your, your, um, your, uh, what do you call it? The, the voice right. that you normally use for your brand voices to connect with them. I, I listen, I love it. I use it same as you. I use it pretty much as often as I possibly can. I can't even put a timeline on it because it's just, I, I use it as often as I possibly can. And what I've, what I've realized that is that's the secret sauce or like the, the superpower of it is when you ask it to ask you questions, right? Mm -hmm. So, hey, I've got to write this, ask me to, or a perfect example is um, we had to write bios, right? And, and now it seems like we're writing a bio every like couple months uh -huh. now. But like, but, but ask, hey, act as a PR agent or whatever. It doesn't, you want to give it a job, act as a PR agent and ask me questions to help me write my bio. What I did before is like, ask me five questions. I don't put a number on it anymore uh -huh. because I want to give it as much information. But what's amazing about that is like, it asked me questions and then it just, it's just a matter of you're filling in the facts. What's your name? Where do you live? What's something you're proud of? You know, it's just like, mm -hmm just that and then it puts all the sexy words in between you know and even if it doesn't give me get me 100% there it gets me 94% there and i go oh well this doesn't make sense or this doesn't make sense right i'll give you another example of how i've used it where and you might actually be able to use mm -hmm. this and anybody else that 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 kind of does group conversations is um a couple of weeks ago uh thank you to Mariah I, what's her last name Villa Villaneva uh Pink Pewter thanks to yeah. thanks to Pink Pewter we um she had us come up to do her event up there and anyways long story short is I had I was moderating a, a barber panel there and what I did was uh we got some of the bios back but some of the bios are like I work at a barber shop like it wasn't like there wasn't enough there to kind of work off of so I went to chat and I said hey can you create a questionnaire for this barber panel that I'm doing and then I gave it a lot of detail too much detail probably it was like here's the audience uh -huh. this is the audience they're young they're young hairstylists um here's the theme of the weekend but then it gave me like an 18 a six, it gave me a 16 mm -hmm. question questionnaire to send them but i was like it has to be 20 you know so i said so it's like <laughs> right four, four questions so <laughs> then it gave me 20 questions that i sent to them and they all filled it out and then i took what they filled out ryan and i go Here's my panel. It's got six people in it. The, here's their names. Here's their bios, and here's their questionnaire answers. And it it, it created. It gave me. It gave me all the questions for That's the panel. Awesome. Yeah. Which was awesome. I mean, it was like it was so easy. And like, let me tell you, before Chat GPT, I don't do this. Like, I just my my I don't my confidence isn't there to do the research. A to do that, and B. I don't really have the time to give like, you know, this is like five hours of work. You know what I mean? Right. In, in about 30 seconds, you know, which was incredible. And then to finish off the story, then I sent back the questions and I asked the panelists, Hey, is there anything on here that you're uncomfortable with? What fires you up? Like, let's prioritize the questions that I'm going to ask you. Cause I want to put that at the beginning. Cause you're never getting through 20 questions in a 30 minute. Totally, panel, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Make, had way more, actually, I think we got to about 12, but, um, but then prioritize this. So it makes sense to you. So that was like such a win for me. And like, I go, mm -hmm. oh, that was so cool. And like, it just, it made that part of my life, like just so, so, so incredibly easy. Anyways, I, I'm a big fan of it, but again, I've yeah. got the superpowers asking it to ask you questions. I've actually, well, I've, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to, to yeah. I, I'm curious. I have a question for you about, about that is how, how do you ask it? Because uh, prompts, for those of you maybe that are, are, have no idea what we're talking about, prompt is like the question you ask it to give you the answer that you want. Uh, I I find myself saying, could you please 
Oh, totally. <laughs> Could you please give me five? Like, I'm, I'm very nice to it because I'm thinking a part, part of me is a, I don't want to be a jerk because I don't want it to come back at me. I want it to be, remember me when AI takes over the planet that like, oh, Ryan was actually <laughs> kind to He's us. Important. He said, please Fair. and thank That's you fair. for this. Like, oh, you're amazing. Thank you. Like, I talk to it like it's a real person. And well, and, and I get really nice responses back. I, I <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Definitely, definitely guilty of that. Um, you know, but there, there's also Ryan. This is interesting too. Like, like if I'm not getting the response that I that I that I want back, I literally oh. have to tell myself this is a machine. I can ask again. Yeah. You know, like, and, yeah. Like, instead of just, give me three more. Give me ten more. Give me twenty more. Please. Exactly. And it kind of it makes <laughs> me kind of like it 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 make it reminds me that sometimes in conversation I'll take a back seat because I don't want to offend the person but uh -huh. I tell myself that you don't this want to offend the computer right but this isn't a person this is a machine and I can keep asking but it kind of it made me evaluate like what are my conversations with like real people you know um but I I you know I also think like I don't want to you know, like this next generation you kind of think like are they going to be just like demanding even when they're talking to people right like, yeah. I think that still comes from how we were raised. And I think that's the parent's responsibility that just carries over. I was raised to say please and thank you and be kind and courteous. And apparently I'm with that with robots as well. <laughs> I've, well I've used it to create images. Like we're putting on an okay. event that we've never done before. And I have like the images in my head and I'm like trying to figure out how to translate it. And I put it into chat and it create all these amazing images for me. Yeah. We had that recently, an image created for my son's birthday. He just turned four on Sunday and it, 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 his, he loves dinosaurs. And my wife used AI and said, hey, I want a picture of my son riding a, a T-Rex. And, and it's like, and we put that image on the cake. And it's just beautiful. Oh, and he's just happy. Cool. He's like riding it like a horse. It's a T Rex, and it looks absolutely, re you know, it's a cartoonish but realistic. It looks like him. And it looks like it's just super cool. It, it's just it, it's yeah. absolutely positively amazing, and, and definitely like the, the the superpower. I haven't quite figured out like aside from like language and stuff how it will directly affect or infect the uh, the industry you know what i mean um, I right. have, yeah um, like on a broad in broad conversation i can give you examples of how i've used it but in broad conversation i'm not really sure how it's going to but but rest assured it's going to you know aside from like many chats or whatever go ahead ryan i oh, just yeah just one of the main reasons i used it initially and this was mind-blowing I, I didn't realize um I, I haven't used it in a while um but you can use it to create website code so if you want your website to do something really cool I have manipulated my website so much. I said, I want graffiti to shoot across the screen. I'm using Kajabi for this or ClickFunnels for this. How? Uh, what, give me some HTML code that this, and it'll give me the CSS script. It'll tell me where to put it. And it takes a little bit of playing around, but if I want to highlight text or do this or different sizes, I can take it, insert it. And you, you, for most things now, I don't need a, a website specialist or a coding specialist for, for what I do, but it looks like it's been pro uh, professionally manipulated. That's amazing. Okay, yeah. I love that. But Ryan, hmm. you need to divvy off some of these jobs to people. <laughs> You're not doing everything. <laughs> but it's like I, what I want to pay somebody $100 an hour for to fix my website if I can do it in in 10 minutes and no conversations yeah okay all right especially because a lot of times I, I don't know if I want it yet or or if I don't I want to see what it looks sure. like before I pay somebody to do it because I have paid thousands of dollars to people before to, to manipulate parts of my website and then realize yeah it's not the direction I want to go anymore yeah. you know I have all this wasted money I mean there are certain things that are only a coding specialist can do um, but right now for what we're doing I mean, websites are pretty smart now just on their own and if you want to manipulate certain things it's a lot of it can be done just with chat i love that yeah yeah i just i th there's a use right i guess you're not being mm -hmm. <laughs> well, so, so you know her, her, why she's so defensive right I'm defensive. Why, well let me be clear i'm not defensive, no, you're not defensive at all now i'm not <laughs> i'm not i'm i'm coming at it from a perspective of time that's it for like you and being a business owner and a, a husband and a dad and because that's what the where i always come from you know mm, that, that's right. the only position i'm coming from hey hey ryan guess who built mm. our website <laughs> Her husband. Oh, her husband. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. What does he what does he get paid? Yeah. I mean, he does. <laughs> he we pay paid. him. We pay him. <laughs> oh, do you? Okay, good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. know. I was like, hey, can you work on this again? That's how um Jenny used to my wife used to be well, with the branding. Ryan, and she's he, like, 
here's a great here's a great boundary is that um if katie wants to talk about the website she has to send uh, an email like they can't do it over dinner they can't do it. and mm. I, I love that as a boundary yeah because i'll go yeah. to him like a tuesday afternoon and be like hey i need to like do this or da, 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 da. and he's like great send it to me in an email yeah it has taken jenny's my wife is the same way it has taken years for us to figure out how to work together uh, yeah it's been <laughs> we are both so stubborn and both so set on our, our ways. So it's like, we've learned to stay in our lanes and then we, we, we mix on certain things and certain things we know not to talk about with each other, but it's taken years to get good at working together. Um, it's been worthwhile, but man, there's been some, some fights. <laughs> there's been some arguments and some, some disconnection because, because of it over the years, but it's, we've, we've made it to the other side. <laughs> you know what? That That's uh to open up another conversation that's really cool too i mean just my wife and i we don't work together but uh-huh. our understanding of each other is so much better now and so much better in general just for us for 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 everything and it's like it's such a glorious space to be um in a, in a relationship you know you work a lot of years to get there and you know 50 percent of us don't get there right like 50% right percent of right percent of if you believe the national divorce yeah. rate you know half of us don't get there so it's really nice when you kind of get on the other side of that and you go okay well that now there's mutual respect you know for for for, for our time for for all of our things you know it's just mm-hmm. it's glorious and now it's like there is no divorce in the future because I don't want to have to go through this with another partner. <laughs> you know? No, I know exactly. This is it. Yeah. Okay. It's like, it's done. Right. It's, if this doesn't work, it's done, uh, but <laughs> we make it work and we love each other. And, and, you know, it's like, it takes, it takes work. I think a lot of us get into relationships thinking like, Oh, I don't have to try anymore. You know, I'm just going to get laid every night now and not have to work for it and all these things <laughs> and everything's going to fall into place. And you're just like, Oh, I still got to, still got to put some, put a lot of effort in to strengthen those bonds and then of course life changes if you have kids if you have different goals uh different wants different needs it's you have to keep adjusting keep evolving and it's 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 going to be a lifelong journey of of keeping that trust keeping that togetherness uh, without it fading i am um, my biggest learn in all relationships is that your partner, no matter who it is, whether, you know, it's Katie as my business partner or, you know, Ryan is my friend is that everybody, um, everybody wants to be seen and heard. And sometimes certainly, and I think that this is a gender thing and I forgive me if, if, it, if you see it otherwise, but I think that guys, we just want to fix things, you know, and that isn't always the solution. You know, the solution is sometimes yeah. just, to be, just to be an open ear and a shut mouth. So or, hard. Or an open ear and just an, I'm sorry, because I our, like that too. Like you want to it's not things. a gender thing. Yeah. As soon as there's a problem that arises, I go into instant fix mode. Like, okay, what do we need mm-hmm. to do to fix this? I, yeah. 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 I, do I have answers for everything. I, I have solutions for everything, but yeah, a lot of times she's just like, no, I don't, I don't want it. I don't want it. Just, I want you to listen. And I'm just like, that's so hard for me. You know what? It, it's crazy because it almost, in, at least in our relationship, it almost feels like a hack in a weird, mm-hmm. like, like, wait a sec. I don't, I, I don't have to like I, all I have to do is say I'm sorry that you're going through that and that's it that's all you need like yeah. one I feel like I feel less of a, a, a of a partner in that sense mm-hmm. so understand that I, I need to see her where she's at right and she's not looking yeah. for a solution she's just looking I've never ever ever in a million years had a conversation with with my guy friends where we weren't like creating a solution you know, we can do this mm-hmm. to fix it we can do this oh yeah I mean, yeah we can go get our guns and go beat them up like we could like like there's always uh, yeah. some kind of like solution with that so <laughs> right. it, and it took me years to kind of figure out like oh I can just sit here and say I'm so, that's so easy but uh-huh. it also feels so like you could be doing more but it's that thing like, you know, loving people the way that they want to be loved and not the way you think you that or that you want to be loving them, you know? A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. That's it. You know, that's it. it it's it, like I said, it, it feels like a hack. I, I think I've been pretty good for about five years of like, oh, I'm sorry that you're going through that. And again, I kind of sit back and go like, I'm going to do more. Like, like yeah. I feel I feel unfulfilled for her. Uh-huh. Problem. You know what I mean? Right. Well, we, we, I, well, I, again, I don't want to be gender specific, like you said, but yeah, we love to fix things. I love most, most guys that I know love to fix things. They love to punch walls, uh, not punch walls. I've sometimes, uh, but <laughs> you know, punch things into walls, you know, grab the hammer, grab the, hang this, do this, fix, put even change a light bulb, things that like you see something that you can do pretty quickly or build something. It's like we like that sense of accomplishment. And I think we like the quick fix. We like to be able to feel like we're, important (laughs) in in a different kind of a way (laughs) that's a great point too like 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 uh, not that it's weird validation but also like 
you know, when I do something for my wife and like, she's like, oh yeah, good job. Like that, that feels so good too. Like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I've contributed to this family, you know I mean? And, and the other thing too with it and, you know, talk about our personal stuff is like, you know, with the podcast, with work, with, with all the things, like there are definitely times, like, I feel like I'm not contributing enough to the family unit. You know what I mean? As much yeah. as I'm in my life. So, mm-hmm. so even like, like you said, like as simple as like changing the light bulb and just like, Hey, thanks for changing the light bulb. Like that's like, that's validation for me like oh i'm contributing to the family i know this is so weird and it's on such like a a micro level but 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 it definitely like like and I, it's also important that you acknowledge that i changed the light bulb and i know on the surface that's like so dumb <laughs> it is it, it, that's when they say well yeah i did the laundry for the last four days and i just did the kid did you know you didn't say anything that you want me to tell you that appreciate you for the light bulb you just you just put in there and when i'm here trying to say like well it's an incandescent bulb it's instead of the this it's a, <laughs> it's a it's a 40 volt instead of a 60 you know I, was, I look at the light that it's casting over here before we didn't have any light here now you can see things yeah i know and, and by <laughs> way, that's so true <laughs> like you know yeah. blinders on when it comes to the stuff that she, right. i want her to acknowledge like, mine's not fixing stuff like that mine's yeah. fixing stuff like you know, Charlie's sick at school, but we have to be here to get Berkeley at the same time. And you know what I mean? Like it's uh, out of fixing. It's like if there's a quick problem within the family, which um, my therapist informed me that is a trauma response is me oh, everything because of all the uh, uh, disappointment that I received as a child. I'm gotcha. like, thanks. Yeah. Check that box also. Mm-hmm. Well, but I think it makes me a good mom though, because I go instantly and like, let's make everybody happy. Right, right, right. And, I'm, and, I, and I and I come along and I'm like, what's the name of his teacher again? Yeah. <laughs> totally. Exactly. So, Where, where's the doctor's office again? Uh, yeah, totally. It's so she created a cheat sheet for me if she goes out of town. So like, Aww, doctor, dentist, this, you know, my phone number. That's yeah. exactly. <laughs> funny. My clients will be like on a sat on a Friday or Saturday. So what are you doing this weekend? And I'm like. I, what, I, whatever direction I'm being pointed in. Like, I don't, I, I like, I do not take care of our social calendar at all. And even when she'll tell me about it, like, I don't, uh, I don't absorb it, you know? So like, it's like Sunday, I'm like, what are we doing today? And here, we're doing this, we're going here. <laughs> Perfect. I'm a thousand percent game. It's funny. Cause you're that for me. You tell me what we're doing. I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> well, that's because I, 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 this is why I don't have space at home. True. You know, there you go. <laughs> kind of pointing us, pointing us in in, 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 in direction. It's, it's so cool, dude. We've covered everything on this podcast. Absolutely. From AI <laughs> to events to 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 relationship building and doing and stuff. But what about well, space? I mean, space is. We haven't even talked about space. You, you mean like black holes and shit? Like or like emotional space. Oh, well, I, I don't want to talk about emotional space. That's not, no, you that's know not what? my specialty. Ryan, Ryan, I am going to talk about emotional space. And here's why. Okay. I owe you an apology. So a couple years ago, you were kind enough to invite us to come to to the hero event. You know, we'll, we'll bring a full circle here. And and it was literally in the middle of, of we were we were planning Presley Poe. And it was one of those like couple weeks where like the shit was hitting the fan. And I didn't get back to you guys with a yes, but my heart and everything was, Mm. but I just did. I didn't have the emotional space to kind of, I couldn't think more than a day ahead at that point. And you kind of, it was, you know, you you did your part. You invited us like eight months ahead of time, which was awesome. And and that's a little too far to invite somebody to something because you don't know if you're going to still be friends by then. But anyway, yeah, (laughs) Yeah, 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 (laughs) like I I hope they're still cool and it'll get canceled by the time they come on our stage. (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) But um, but you invite, and and I just didn't have the capability to even think about it because we were, you know, you put out fires, you know, a month or a couple months before an event and this was one of those particular weeks where we had a lot of fires going and we're trying to we're trying to sure. close them down and and i'm pretty sure that's when i like came back right and we only had like three months before the show as i had a baby and it was like <laughs> this big gap this was all the things and, yeah and then i finally reached out to them and they're like sorry we filled that spot but but from the bottom of my heart i apologize for 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 that for all of that stuff um but not making excuses but i just didn't have the headspace to kind of to kind of bring it in and, but also like as a lesson like you know you need the space to kind of absorb this but i just could, i couldn't see past a day um um in, in that moment and you know had you caught me on any other week it would have been yeah sir we'll be there kind of stuff but mm-hmm big apology like a personal apology i don't know if i've ever apologized to you for that but but for real apologize and, I, and i'm sorry that i shit the bed for you i I'm, I'm really disappointed in myself and disappointed that we could that we couldn't make it happen but but i'm also glad that we're on this podcast and it wasn't like a friendship killer mm-hmm. or anything yeah. like that you know well, I, I appreciate that as well well just hang on one second let me take you off the the, the hit list here 
<laughs> okay. Okay. So the grudge has been lifted after all these years. Uh, yeah. No, I'm kidding. I, I didn't think anything of it. I, I know you guys were busy. Yeah, well... <laughs> I, well, uh, thank you. Until this moment, I, there's definitely been a little weight on me about it. Like, fuck, man, I, I like, I, I just hate being that guy, you know. Like, I like to be dependable and stuff. So that's probably more what I'm putting on stuff on me. But whatever. Yeah. Well, I guess I indirectly get back at you by, you know, uh, unconsciously by not showing up to our podcast appointment like today morning, where I'm just like, <laughs> you're just like, hey, you said, hey, I'm in with the text, and I was like, oh fuck, is that today? <laughs> Yes, yes. It and this is after my toddler's birthday party, and the stre- I, this birthday was just next level. I've never had parties like this. Freaking petting zoo, jump house, made their own cowboy hats. I'm just like, oh. but okay, but yeah, that's a whole other thing. But um, yeah, we're friends again. It's fine. Right. It's good. We're again, good. again, the air is clear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you apologize. I, know. I, I know. Gosh, yeah. I wasn't a part of that. <laughs> There was but, oh, next year, next year you guys got to come. We got we got to do something special for that because we'd love to have you. Your Dude, voice listen, is we, first very we powerful. We need that as well. Yeah, we, we can support that. each other event, either each other's event. How about that? Well, I I was gonna make the uh, off air, but I we would love for you to show up for Pressy Poe and Friends and just like I think it's really cool. I think what we're doing is really different, and I can't tell you why it's different because it's an experience, and as you know, it's so hard to sell an experience, you know, um, but but we would love for you to be in attendance and to come and hang out and just to kind of see, you know, we like to have cool kids in the in, in the mm-hmm. class because we're so uncool, but uh, but we would love to have you. Uh, we'll, we can get off air. We'll give you a little more details about you. Awesome. About- all, all that good grooviness and stuff, but um, but it's definitely a, a cool event. It's definitely a different event. It's definitely an event that you leave and you're no matter who you are, whether you're an artist, mm-hmm. whether you're a brand, whether you're whatever. You know, our goal is to make your cup full and and make sure that when you leave, you're like that was fucking cool. You know, and mm-hmm. in the last five years, that that's certainly been the majority of it. Maybe we should amazing. T- oh, I was going to ask you that. So you were talking about huh. the, with your clients. Do you also send out um like a like uh like post event kind of um communication to the attendees and stuff we do we do uh a lot of times we'll if especially if we had like some kind of a special deal going on i mean that's also just to help sell more sell more of our special offers and things that we do uh but yeah we normally send out a you know hey thank you so much for coming here it's it's a hard to send out 800 personal ones it's more of a blanket uh sure. you know sure. kind of a summarize summary follow-up but um yeah it's we we, we do we like to do a post event email we we learn so much from our post um post event emails, you know, and it's just like small stuff, you know, because like a you survey, start, you send like out a, a survey. Sur- well, That's a, a good survey. idea. I don't and and an open box like tell us about your experience you know mm-hmm. um, and, right. and and you know honestly when you're like oh everything was great everything was awesome you're like okay good good but you you want to get to the one star reviews you want to go sure. to those you know as a as a presenter and not take it personal there's no ego in, involved sure. where do we and it you wouldn't believe it was dumb stuff that like like that we didn't even think about and a good example is is our class, I think it was with Jacob Kahn, actually. Our class was from like 9 to 10.30, right? Well, we mm-hmm. didn't open the doors until 9, which meant that by the time they were setting mm-hmm. up, now it's 9.30. Now, instead of being an sure. hour class, it's an hour class. And, like, I, I, I took that a little bit because I, I, I'm I really good at, like, seeing how the day plays out. And I go, I didn't see that. You know, but it was great. Uh-huh. Now, okay, now we know. Like, we have to be there 30 minutes early. We have to open the doors 30 minutes early, and there's no excuse for that. But but that was a really, really good learn. And I know saying it like, you're like of course, you idiot. You know, <laughs> you don't, uh, start the, you know, open the doors when the movie starts. But, but for, you know, there's a million different things to think about, and that was just something that slipped through. And it was just such a great, like, oh, of course, you idiot, you know, like right. that. But even 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 other stuff, you know, like like I know a couple years ago, it was like, I wish we had more more networking time, you know, with that. Um, here's where I also messed up, Ryan, is like we do a networking time after the event. And and because of that, we have a bunch of chairs set up. So we started cleaning up the chairs. Well, everybody was mm-hmm. taking that as like, it's time to go. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. But but that wasn't the intention at all. So now when mm-hmm. we get to the stage, we're like, hey, we're just going to clean up the chairs so we have more space to kind of like hang out. Sure. You know what I mean? But but literally two years ago, we just started cleaning up chairs to make more room and everyone's leaving. You're like, why did I clean up the chairs? You guys are leaving. <laughs> Which is so- uh, <laughs> we're going to make everybody happy. But those things definitely help with like logistical stuff and things that we just don't think about sure yeah it's very similar to the follow-up text with a client you can find out maybe where you're you're missing the mark even though you think you're your aces all across the table 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, 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 you know, it's also good because if one person complains, you have to believe that, 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 that 30 people saw it the same way. Mm-hmm. You know, so right. You get that. So you get that one. I, hopefully I, it's not, a, hopefully it's not a 30 person event. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, hopefully not all right, cool. all right ryan we're in an hour dude i just okay. appreciate the time thank you so much for hanging out with us thank you for uh for for the chat and thank you for allowing the conversation to dictate the conversation but mr ryan whedon thank you very very much for joining us on thanks your- for having me oh sorry yep I that's, okay. shut up. that's what i i just need to listen you gotta- see i just need to listen i know i can fix this all right thank you guys for listening today <laughs> Please make sure you go and uh, uh, give a five star review here and, and uh, tell us how much you like. Take a screenshot here and let us know how much you like the show today. Thank you. Oh, Ryan, that was all. <laughs> Before we officially go, like, how can people uh, find you, find Mob, get tickets for a Hero next year? Because we're going to be in Nashville. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's going to be so awesome. Yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. Nash Vegas, baby. Uh, you can send me a DM. Uh, I would appreciate it if you could screenshot this and I'll share it, uh, this episode here. You go to Ryan.Weedon. That's an IG at Ryan. Oh, that's it. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> go to Ryan. Down- like in the, in the wide blue. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I'm, I'm going to shut up. Well, Ryan, once again, uh, don't walk over me this time, but thank you very, very much <laughs> for joining us on your day off. <laughs>Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.